Welcome back, everybody. Now, Christy, I've got a question for you. Shoot. What's your favorite artificial sweetener? No, no, no. I like sugar. Oh. However, my husband, he loves the blue packets in the coffee. Always. Okay, well, this is a story that he should not miss, and it will probably change your habits there at home. Our special correspondent, Miranda Kahn, met with our health expert on location to talk about how artificial sweeteners might not be a good option. Let's take a look. When we're looking for foods and drinks that are low in calories, artificial sweeteners may seem like the answer. But what you may not realize is that many of those sugar substitutes can actually be hazardous to your health. Joining us now to explain more is our health expert, Dr. David Friedman. Hey. Thanks so much for being here. Great to be here. You know, Miranda, many people out there have no clue of the dangerous effects that these artificial sweeteners play on them, their families, and their loved ones. The list is just incredible. Why are artificial sweeteners so bad for us? You just said the magic word, artificial. Anything labeled artificial is usually created by chemists in a laboratory. These cannot be easily digested by the body. In fact, study after study links these chemicals to imbalances created inside the body. These imbalances, let me tell you what they've been linked to. You ready? All types of ailments from depression, joint aches, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, cancer, even reports of death. 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 Suddenly gaining a few pounds doesn't seem so bad. Well, actually, there's no concrete evidence showing that these sugar substitutes even help people lose weight. In fact, studies suggest quite the opposite, that chemical sweeteners actually stimulate appetite and contribute to obesity. Let's look at diet soft drinks for an example. They claim to be a diet aid. It was a University of Texas study, eight-year study, that found that diet soft drinks containing artificial sweeteners have been shown to increase, ready, the risk of obesity by 41%. 41? 41. For every one cup or glass that you drink. Researchers concluded that the chemical used in these soft drinks cause you to crave more carbs. When you crave more carbs, you gain more weight. Good point. Good point. <laughs> There are so many different artificial sweeteners out there, so which ones are actually good for us? None of them are good for you. First, let's talk about sucralose. Recognize these packets? You see them everywhere. Let me tell you how it's made. Are you ready? I'm they, ready. For, they use real sugar, so, so they start with this stuff, real sugar. Right. Then they chemically modify it to make it calorie-free. You want to know how? I'm afraid to ask. They add chlorine. It's actually chlorinated sugar. That's how they make sucralose. That's not all. They use a whole smorgasbord of chemicals. Let me tell you the others they use. Ladies, recognize this? Of course, nail polish remover. Nail polish remover. Well, there's a chemical in here called acetone, and that's the stuff in nail polish remover. That is a chemical used to create sucralose. Okay, not all. Benzene is also added. You know what benzene is? Maybe not, but it's a known carcinogen, and it's an ingredient used in oil and gasoline. Oh, let's not forget the next one. It's called methanol. This is a wood alcohol used in windshield washer fluid and also antifreeze. This is in the artificial sweeteners. That's what they used to make it. Doc Dr. Friedman, I'm in complete disbelief right now. But wait till you hear the last ingredient used to make sucralose. Formaldehyde which is used to preserve dead bodies. To preserve dead bodies. Now, my thinking is this, maybe I could be wrong, formaldehyde is for dead bodies, not for live bodies. We shouldn't right. put that in our live bodies. I feel sick. <laughs> well, you feel sick, but I'll tell you, people don't just feel sick from this, a lot of them are actually getting sick. Here's the clincher and why I believe the research saying sucralose is not good for you. Ready? Some of the chemicals used to make this artificial sweetener is listed on the EPA's list of most deadly poisons. All this stuff I'm telling you today, folks, no secret. Go right online, do a Google search, type in the chemical composition of sucralose. It's there. It, it's, it's thousands of hits. It's not a big secret. Dr. Friedman, I'm almost afraid to ask, but tell us about aspartame. Aspartame. That's found in those little blue packets. You recognize those at all the restaurants. Sometimes it's called phenylalanine. That's a big word. When you see big words like that, that's chemicals. That's not natural. My view is if you can't pronounce it, don't put it in your body. It's I like chemistry. That. Aspartame has been the subject to a lot of heated controversy, both because of safety issues and what many health experts, including me, consider questionable circumstances surrounding its approval. Aspartame brings in, ready, more complaints to the FDA on adverse reactions to food additives than anything else in existence. Wow, like what? Memory loss, headaches, dizziness, seizures, nausea, weight gain, depression, insomnia, fatigue, the list goes on and on and on. In fact, aspartame has 92 official side effects reported to the FDA, the worst being death. 
I thought I read somewhere some reports about it being linked to Michael J. Fox and his development of Parkinson's. Well, Miranda, dozens of reliable sources have actually reported that Michael J. Fox's constant exposure to that chemical aspartame while he was endorsing a popular soft drink actually is the reason he developed Parkinson's at such an unprecedented early age, 29 years old. Wait a minute, aspartame is used in so many foods and drinks. How uh, do we avoid that? Not so many. Let me tell you how many. Six thousand consumer products worldwide use it. Now this includes, ready, sodas, breath mints, cereals, chewing gums, desserts, teas, coffees, even multivitamins, pharmaceutical drugs, wine coolers, and yogurt. Are there any other artificial sweeteners we need to watch out for? Yeah, there is another one. It's the big S word. It's called saccharin. You know the stuff. You, you've seen these. It's, yeah. the, it's the pink packets out there. Well, throughout the 60s and the 70s, studies showed that saccharin was linked to causing cancer in animals. Saccharin, here's what it is. It's a coal tar derivative. has no food value whatsoever. It's created by chemists in a laboratory. It's not food. Many chemicals that used to make up saccharin is going to make your head turn. One of them is ammonia. That can't be good. It actually is good if you want to clean your toilet. Excellent stuff. But you know something? This doesn't belong in my body. I don't think it belongs in anybody's body. It's not natural. This shouldn't be making sweeteners we put into our bodies. All right. Okay. So I think we've heard enough. We get the idea. No more artificial sweeteners. Good. So are there any, like, low-calorie sugar options out there? Anything healthy? There's actually three sugar substitutes that I definitely recommend, but we're out of time. So I'm going to have to cover those on the next episode. All right. I look forward to it. Thanks, Dr. Friedman, right. for being here. Indeed. And thank you for watching. And if you'd like to watch this report again, you can always go to thebalancingact.com slash